Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody to how to validate a design using FBA on the 3D Experience platform. My name is Chris Costa. I support our presenter, Chung Ping Lu, on the sales and account management side. So if there's any non-technical questions, of course, feel free to ask them or follow me at the end of the seminar I will or webinar. I will also put my email in the chat box in the event you want to ask me any questions throughout. Um, so without further delay, I'll introduce Chung Ping Lu. Yep. Okay, so I'll, everybody, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to attend this afternoon's webinar, How to Validate a Design Using FBA on a 3D Experience Platform. Uh, my name is Chris Costa. I support our presenter, Chung Ping Lu, on the sales and account management side of things. So if there's any non-technical questions, feel free to ask them or follow up with me either in the chat or at the end of the webinar, and I'll also put my email address in the chat. Um, so without too much further delay, you don't, you're not here to hear me speak, that's for sure. I will uh, introduce Chung Ping Lu. He's our senior technical represent, representative and our subject matter expert on all simulation solutions for Solid Experience, uh, Solid Experience Group. So with that, I will allow my friend Chung to take it away. The floor is yours, my friend. Thank you very much, Chris. All right, so, um, well, just to keep introducing myself, uh, as Chris said, I'm a senior technical representative at Solid Experts, and my role at, uh, at Solid Experts is to do presentations on, well, mostly on simulation solutions. Um, and uh, today will be a, a webinar on, uh, on our solution, Simulia Works. Okay, so um, let's uh, have a look at uh, what we're going to see in this presentation. We'll first discuss about SOLIDWORKS simulation uh, and especially discuss about its limitations, okay, and what brings us to the 2D experience using SOLIDWORKS simulation or directly from the 2D experience solution. Uh, we'll uh, have a uh, look at a, an analysis creation, more in details in Simulia Works, and then we will focus on the analysis results. Uh, all right, so first let's, um, let's talk about SolidWorks simulation. So you, you may be clients um, for, uh, for SolidWorks simulation. Well, you are, you are maybe our clients already, or you maybe think about using a simulation solution to validate your design. Okay, so um, we can already solve any kind of FEA uh, problems, including static analysis. Uh, it could be linear, nonlinear as well. In this example that we can see in this image, it is a nonlinear static analysis. We're going to compress this bumper part made of rubber, and there is a bar made of steel. Okay. We will first have a look at how we, we should solve this problem and what kind of issues that we can encounter that may lead us to going into the 3D experience. So this is the first part. Uh, so let's have a quick look at, uh, at SolidWorks. So we we're about to create an analysis using SOLIDWORKS simulation. All right, here is our model. Uh, let me enable the SOLIDWORKS simulation add-in, including the 3D experience add-in, so I can connect my SOLIDWORKS simulation analysis to the 3D experience. So we have this part on the right side. All right. Um, Okay, so uh, we have we have our add-in. So this is a simple, very simple analysis. It's a nonlinear static analysis where I fixed the bottom of this rubber part, and on the top I will apply a translation of 25 millimeters going down. Okay, let me just connect to the platform again, since I got disconnected. Okay, so it's very simple. We have, well, first, this is a nonlinear analysis. 
uh, because of the nature of the problem, because it involves a large deformation, and especially because we are using a nonlinear material, especially for the rubber part that we have here. In fact, we have a material um, using the hyperelastic Mooney Rivlin model type. All right, so it, this is clearly a nonlinear analysis. Uh, we have the fixtures as described earlier and there there are contacts of course because i'm going to apply this load on this bar that will compress this rubber part so i will add some contacts or in other words interactions so this bar here that i'm selecting will interact with these three faces that we see here all right uh, we can also add a friction if needed. Uh, we have more contacts because in the middle here, as this rubber part compresses, the middle side here, we have some faces that will come into contact. Okay, so I will select these three faces as in this example. Of course, I would have selected the, the whole hole that is here, but let's just make this quick here. Okay. Um, next, the next step will be to create the mesh. Okay, so those who are familiar with solid simulation, you know, you already know all these steps. Okay. We we have a lot of tools uh, in in the meshing options to allow us to to quickly generate the mesh and and especially to take into account these uh, these kind of entities such as fillets or smaller areas. We are now ready to solve. Okay, so I'm going to run this analysis. And of course, we could be wondering how long this analysis could take to completely solve. Is it going to take a couple of minutes? Maybe. Is it going to take a couple of hours? Maybe. It depends. Well, it depends on how complex this analysis is. It, depend, it depends on how fine the mesh is. It depends on how many contacts do we have. Okay. So as we are talking here after 30 seconds, we are still stuck at 1% of the analysis. And let's just keep going a little bit more because I want to I want you to see how how big such problem is. Okay. So uh, we, are approach, we are approaching one minute and we are still at 1%. Um, and this is, this is because solid simulation must solve contacts. Uh, it, it must go through many, many calculations. So after one minute, we are still stuck at 1%. So I will just cancel this, okay? So it's, of course, we may be wondering Am I using the correct tool to, to create this type of analysis, which is to compress a part of rubber? In fact, yes, this, this solution can solve this kind of problem. But how long is it going to take to solve this problem? That's another question. So here we have SolidWorks simulation that we can connect to the 3D experience. So I can use the power of the 3D experience. So First, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to save this analysis, which includes all the features, and I will include some options so I can uh, put it on the cloud. Okay, so there's an option here. After saving the analysis, I can send it to, to, to the cloud or in fact to the 3D experience so I can create a structural simulation. All right, so this is the first step. Um, so it's, well, it's taking too much time, okay, for such a small problem. Um, you see here, we are taking up to 32 minutes and it's still solving. So we are wondering is how much is it going to take to completely solve this? Or maybe we, we have in our mind, the analysis is stuck. What should I do? What, what should be the next step? Um, or maybe you are creating an analysis and you find out that there are way too much, way too many contact definitions, 
to, to create, which takes a, a huge amount of time. Those are some reasons to go to the 3D experience simulation. Okay, so which brings us to the second part of this webinar. An analysis creation in Similia Works. Similia Works is the solution inside the 3D experience platform to, to create analysis. Well, it, it doesn't just create analysis. It also helps us collaborate between, between uh, colleagues as well. Uh, you can also manage. Uh, you, can, you can do much more than, than just creating analysis. Uh, so let's explore how Simula works, uh, how, how an analysis is done inside Simula works. Um, all right, so here we go. Uh, this is the interface. This is the user interface of Simulia Works, which looks like SolidWorks simulation that we just saw a little bit earlier. Uh, we have this simulation tree where I can access the parts, the mesh, all imported features, the analysis as well, which is empty right now. Uh, we have um, features at the bottom classified by types, already talking about uh, features to, to fix the model, uh, or talking about loads. So it's, um, it's all separated into many, many types. And we can also get access to an assistant. The assistant is here to help us, to guide us through the whole analysis, to make sure that I'm not missing something important. So let's first have a quick look at the materials. Uh, I have two materials here that got imported. Uh, I have a uh, AISI 1020 steel applied to the bar here. And of course, uh, as we saw earlier, we, uh, we said earlier that we have a uh, hyperelastic material. So this is, this is like the, uh, the material definition, very similar to, to the one that we saw in saw race simulation, where we can get access to some, to some mechanical properties. And as we can see here, there are, they are much more than just than just linear or nonlinear materials. Uh, we can find some high perform materials and even more. So it's it's more a lot more complete what we see here. Okay. Um, so uh, with with SOLIDWORKS uh, with three D experience simulation, first we get a uh, a larger um, we get we get more features on materials. We can get more material types, in other words. Uh, the next thing we're going to see here, let's talk about the mesh. Uh, we have here a, a teacher a draw mesh. Uh, if you are a SOLIDWORKS simulation user, you, you may recognize this kind of mesh here. Okay? Nothing has changed. It's the same type. We can choose the order of the element. Okay. Uh, what is different now? Um, we have more elements, okay? Because we are using the power of Simulia. It's not just about beam, um, shell, and teacher draw elements. We also have what we call hex elements. Okay, this is a very powerful element that will give you more precisions on the results. So yes, we can apply this kind of this type of element uh, on our structure. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, I will complete this analysis and I will use the assistant. The assistant is like a wizard. The wizard will guide you through the uh, required steps. Okay. Uh, I will add a, um, a static step here. Okay. Even by using the default values, I can go through the analysis very quickly. Okay. As soon as I define the, uh, the properties or the features, we can see some green checks that confirms that this step has been completed. There's no specific um, order to follow. Okay, you, you can complete these steps in the order of your choice. Um, in the interactions, I will add some interactions here, such as some contacts. Uh, I would like in this example to have some, some tangential effects. Uh, so what happens when these parts slide between each other, as an example, so we can add friction properties. Okay. 
Here we go. That's what I applied here. And there is a special feature here called the general contact that we don't have in SolidWorks simulation. It's a very special contact that allows the user to reuse the same contact at different places. Here is how it works. Okay? So in SolidWorks simulation, you would have to define a local contact everywhere at places where a contact will occur. So we, you see here, we, we have a contact that would occur. There's another one here that may occur as well, depending on the load applied. And think about something more complex than this rubber part. You may have maybe a dozen, uh, maybe hundreds of, of contacts. That's where this general contact will, will be very useful. Okay. So um, this is what I applied and um, I also have some fixtures to apply and I will fix the bottom of this part. Okay. Uh, I will use a multi-selection here. Let me just hide this mesh, which will make it easier. All right, so I will select the whole tangency that we have here, including the bottom face. All right, there we go. We have applied a uh, fixed geometry. In other words, uh, I will also apply a uh, another feature, a, a, another fixture here. Um, so this face will be fixed only uh, in the normal direction. So it can slide. In other words, along the these uh, these arrows here. All right, so we have just completed the fixtures. Uh, do we have loads? Yes, we do. Uh, we said we wanted to apply a load as a translation that we're going to uh, specify on the top of this bar here, which I'm going to select. And I will apply a translation of 25 millimeters in the Z direction. Okay, so I will put in minus 25 because I want the force downwards. And then OK. Um, to help the solver, I will also fix both directions in, in the X and Y directions, because I don't want any movements along these uh, directions here. So I can apply a load as a, as a translation uh, to fix. Well, in fact, I'm applying a translation of 0 in the X direction uh, on this face, of course. And I will do the same on the y direction. Okay, so in the y direction, I want a transition of zero again here on this face. All right, I have defined everything that I needed. Now I can run the analysis. Let's talk about the solver. Okay, so I will uh, run this analysis. I will be able to use what we call the abacus solver. It's it's a very well, it's a very fun. It's the most powerful solver that you will find on the market, okay, for solving simulation problems. Okay. We have it, we offer it to you. You can run the analysis locally, okay, which is what I'm going to do here. There's another choice to run it on the cloud. Why it should be run in the cloud? Let's say that you have a machine. It could be a powerful machine, but you you don't have the specs uh, that you that, that will allow you to run analysis very quickly. So that could be a reason to use the cloud to run an analysis. Why not? On the cloud, you maybe have hundreds of, of cores sitting there and waiting for you to use them. Okay. For that, you need some credits. Okay. Uh, if you run locally, you may use to four cores locally on your computer. If you want to run the analysis using more than four cores, there is also an option using the credits. This is what I'm going to do here. I will use more than four cores. I, I want a quick analysis, so, so I will use a, um, a uh, I will demand for a higher performance here. All right, so I will run this analysis using a performance of seven, which is the highest on my computer, running on my own station. Okay. 
And let's see how long it's going to take compared to what we saw earlier with the analysis that got stuck after one minute at 1%. Here we have the license consumption. Well, it says this analysis, so far we have consumed 111 credits. The number of credits depend on, on how, well, on the problem that we are solving, the kind of analysis, and how long it's going to take to solve. We can see how, how far it's going for now. We have applied, uh, well, in this, in this analysis, I specified a static step of one second. It's not one real second, um, it's just a reference. But now I have close to 60% of the analysis completed already in less than one minute. We can see here how many iterations that I have performed so far and how many we still need to, um, how, how long or how, well, we're at 75%. So I still need, well, 83, we still need to, to solve for 17%, 94. And it's done. Okay, so in about one minute, more or less, we are ready to see the results compared to one minute of calculation in saw race simulation, and we're still stuck at one percent. This is the power of Simulia. Okay, so let me uh, let's have a look at the results here. So it's very simple. Now you just need to choose the time step and the results you want to look at. All right, so in this comparison here, after 53 seconds of calculation, from one side with solve simulation, we were stuck at 1%. On the other side, with Simulia, Simulia works, we are ready to look at the results. To me, robustness equals to productivity. Okay, the faster you get this done, the more productive you are. All right, now the, let's have a look at the uh, third part of this webinar, the analysis results. Um, so let's go back to our Simulia interface. Uh, so I say thank you to the assistant. Uh, now we are looking at the uh, Von Mises stress results. The units are, are Pascal. Of course, we can switch it to PSI, KSI, or other units. Um, we can launch in the animation, so we can see how, how the part deforms. And I will use my finger. I will simply just rotate, do some translations with the model, zoom in, zoom out. Uh, so we can play with it um, because, well, in fact, this, this uh, 2D experience platform, um, we have a uh, touch screen feature. So why not? We can we can use this touch screen feature. We can maybe stop it and and run the animation at the speed that I want to because sometimes it's too quick. So you see here, I can slowly drag this cursor. Um, all right, so I'm looking at the last step, and there are many features that we can use to quickly highlight the results or simply get a better view of the results. Uh, why not using some section views? All right, so I can just simply move a plane, and I will be able to see results everywhere on this structure. So let's fix it here. And then I can go more into detail and see what is the result at this specific place or the result here or here. All right, so I can simply just move my mouse and it will show the results in a dynamic way. I can also have a look at the at the legend. Uh, I can control what what is the maximum value that should be shown on the screen. Let me put this at 1 million. And uh, I can ask Simulia to show results higher than 1 million Pascal in a different color, as we can see here on the screen. 
all right um, so these these tools are here to help us validate the results I can also show what what the min and maximum values are um, let me just fix it at a, a specific um, step here um, right so and we also have some tools to compare uh, the results as well I can simply just drag the the um, the plots I would like to see uh, just one second let me just do it properly okay I want to see well let's say this one okay here we go um we have we are comparing results and comparing results this way is easier for the user to understand what happens at a specific location for example what what is the stress here uh, what is the Vanessa stress compared to the displacement or or the pressure so we can quickly compare result this way we can make changes to to the static step if needed or the uh, or the plot type okay. so we keep this ease of use that we have in SOLIDWORKS simulation um, let's say that we are happy with what we have and we are ready to to create a report to summarize the, the whole analysis I can of course use a template I can choose from a list of templates and choose what what sections should should be in, in that report and then I create the report uh, I I will just uh, go and have a coffee or something and come back and the report will be done well actually you know what it's it's very funny I have seen cases where the analysis solved inside Similia works with the abacus solver it was quicker than a report creation it's funny because it's it's the power of abacus inside Similia works it can solve it can solve analysis so quickly that i couldn't believe it the first time that i saw it so it's done we have the report and it's a real report with a control and click we will get to that specific place, in this case, the conditions. Okay, so it's a real report. It looks like the one in SOLIDWORKS simulation for those who, who are already client and who are already using SOLIDWORKS simulation. So we have results, we have everything here. Of course, we can write into report. We can maybe add a conclusion. If it breaks, it's Chris Costa's fault. No, actually, I'm just kidding, but it's- I like my, I like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, we can customize the, the report, in other words. So I can move the, the images and we can do it whatever we want with this report. Okay. Um, all right, so- um, so we can talk about simplicity from start to finish. Okay? Just like what we have in SOLIDWORKS simulation, as you already know, you, you have an assistant to guide you through the analysis creation, and you have a lot of tools, a lot of choices. One thing that I like about our solutions, uh, Simulia works or SOLIDWORKS simulation is, is the the amount of options that we have so so all users can have their own ways to to analyze the results or to interpret the results okay so it's simple from start to finish i think the most important thing that we need to know after this webinar is what can 3d experience works simulation offer to you we can first uh, talk about connectivity with SOLIDWORKS. 
because it allows you to connect your analysis inside SolidWorks and bring it to the 2D experience platform. Okay. So we can finish your analysis creation or simply just use the power of Simulia to run the analysis. We can talk about simplified creation of interactions. Remember at the beginning, we were creating context manually. With Simulia, it's not, it's not the same thing. With Simulia, we have general context. We have much more power in, in creating features such as context or interactions. This is my favorite one, the power of the Abacus solver. Nothing beats Abacus when we talk about power in simulation. Okay. We have this chance to, to, to use the, the power of Ab to the Abacus solver. And we saw it. In, in one minute, this problem is already solved. Okay. So imagine your, your much bigger analysis involving a, a crash test, a, uh, a can crush, or something similar to that. This is where the uh, the power will be very useful, and to um, and to help with the power again here, we offer the cloud. Why not launching an analysis on the cloud directly, and using these um, these cores stored in the cloud of of, of the three D experience to run analysis, maybe running multiple analysis at the same time, or maybe just running one, and running it especially much more faster than running it locally. Here are some other examples that we can, uh, we can see. Um, we already saw the one with the, the rubber. Uh, we have a compression of a, uh, of a cube, a hydroforming um, problem. Uh, here are more. I was talking about the the, uh, the can crush that we have here. So it's uh, this is very very complex. This is a very complex problem, or just simply a a crash test, okay, or, or an impact simulation. And uh, for that, we have what we call the explicit solver. So there are many more features that I have not shown here. Um, so there are there are much more. In, uh, in similar works. Um, you can, of course, also solve drop tests, uh, again, using some the, the, uh, the very powerful solver of Abacus. Um, here is the Similia works portfolio. Uh, we have many, well, many, many features um, inside these four packages or should I say these roles? That's how we call them in the, in the 3D experience. Um, to give you an example here, we have this role structural designer. So this is perfect for a designer who is very focused on, on designing um, a, um, a, a product, okay? And maybe this designer would like to test the, uh, the product by himself, and why not? He will launch a linear static analysis, a frequency analysis, a thermal analysis, have a quick test, okay? and also use the cloud computing as well, if needed. Okay? Uh, there's an, also another level, very similar to the structural designer, which is structural engineer, where we'll add more features, well, in this case, more analysis. Um, we'll add some dynamic analysis, we'll add more features to the meshing, we'll add a little bit more as we go to the right side. Um, in the third one here, we have structural performance engineer. It, this, this is the example that I showed today. So a, a nonlinear static analysis where we bend apart and we used a nonlinear material for that, and we use some nonlinear features as well, such as calculating a part that that has large deformations. But it's more than just that. 
We have many, many more features, including advanced connectors, including uh, the uh, a nonlinear dynamic analysis using an implicit solver, uh, which is less powerful than, ex than an explicit solver. And there we, we have here, yeah, we have structural mechanics engineer with the nonlinear dynamic ex explicit, which is a much more powerful solver uh, to run even more complex analysis, such as a, a can crush that we saw earlier, uh, quasi static explicit. We can solve complex frequency analysis. We can also have access to a material calibration. Sometimes it's important to calibrate a material so they are, they are more in the advanced roles that we have here. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention, um, inside the 3D experience platform, in fact, we also have a platform here. So everything is inside the 3D experience platform. And uh, here we go, we have roles. Um, we have these, well, I currently have these roles, but you, you would have roles as well if you uh, go with the solution. Um, I have the structural performance engineer role with many apps here, including the one that allowed me to create the analysis. And there are many, many more roles, including roles to store files. Uh, and there is a special role here that allows me to to have a quick look at, at a, uh, in this case, it could be to visualize a part or in my case here to, to play an animation of another analysis that I created. So it's um, so this is the three D experience platform. Um, all right, uh, and so this ends the uh, webinar uh, on Simulia Works on how to validate an, an analysis, a finite element analysis on the three D experience platform using Simulia Works. You have any questions, you can email us at info at solidexperts.com. Okay, so let me just have a quick look at the uh, questions. I would like to see if there are any questions. No, I'm not okay. seeing any questions in the chat. You must have did a great job, Chung Ping. Oh, thank you very much, Chris. <laughs> um, oh, well, we welcome you. Come on, let's see it. Let's <laughs> yeah, so, so, okay. Thank you very much for attending this webinar. And um, well, see you next time. Thanks, John. Take care. Thank you, Chris. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.